Listen, you're not gonna find anything on me, okay? Trust me. Empty your pockets into the tray, sir, or we'll have to. Your pockets, sir? Lady, the problem isn't in my pants. No! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is West, and it's the time for a little bit of Marvel Comics news. Uh, mostly, uh, today it centers around kind of X-Men and specifically Chris Claremont with a little bit of uh, Conan uh, in there at the end. And I know you're wondering, you're like, why aren't you covering this on this week in X-Men with Doc? Well, that's because this is an absolutely huge week for X-Men comics. We've got four comics we have to review on uh Sunday for you folks. We're going to cover both of the comics that are in uh, the preludes to Tennis Swords. We're going to talk about uh, Giant Size X-Men Storm, and we're going to you know talk about our favorite Hellions comic as well. So I got to cover the news outside of that. Otherwise, that'll be a 40-minute video because if you get Doc really going about X-Men, there's basically no stopping him. I, I can't stop him, folks. So I, I got to take a little bit off his plate. I'm going to run it solo today, and we're going to talk about Wolverine's fake Milestone 350 we're going to talk about the 50th anniversary celebration comic for Chris Claremont, as well as the aforementioned King Size Conan, which I'm personally very excited about. And honestly, I'm actually excited about all three of these announcements. I think they're all really cool. I do, I do have an issue. I do have an issue, folks, with Wolverine 350, and we'll get into that. Uh, but before we get into the details, I do want to say, if this is your first time uh, come visiting the channel, and you haven't subscribed, you've been coming around, you haven't subscribed, now is the time to subscribe to Thinking Critical YouTube, especially you love comic book, the comic book industry. That's all we cover here, here folks, basically. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this content. Give me an enormous thumbs down if you don't. Either way, I definitely want to hear your feedback in the comment section uh, about all these stories. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about, and, and I'm going to, and I will address the elephant in the room folks, first, folks is Wolverine 350, also known as Wolverine number eight. And it's going to be written by Benjamin Percy, illustrated by Adam Kubert and Victor Bogdanovich, special um, plus size issue. Obviously, it's probably going to be nine or ten bucks. This is not Wolverine 350. This is more like Wolverine 360. We're already at, I believe it, where's my little cheat sheet here? We're already at Wolverine 356. Not counting the annual issues. If we, if we take the annuals out of Wolverine, we're at 356. Now, you could say, Wes, there was a time when he kind of became, retroactively became Dark Wolverine, and that covered 15 issues. Yes, you could take that out. And we would be at 341 right now, and then when we get to Wolverine number eight, we'd be at like 345. So this is a fake milestone. It's a very Marvel thing to do. It screams Legion of Doofuses, most likely Jordan White. It's what he does, folks. He he fumbles the ball all, all over the place. But I am excited about this, and I'll and I'll tell you why. I think Wolverine 350 is a good idea right now, because this is the best version of Wolverine we've had, either writing or illustrating on the series in like ten years. Benjamin Percy's Wolverine is absolutely spot on. It's a great depiction of the character. He's the only character in Dawn of X right now that really feels like the actual character. And um, Ben Percy's knocking out of the park. His Wolverine stuff is top notch. You, you know, even his stuff in uh, X-Force, which I do enjoy, his Wolverine there works very well too. And Adam Kubert is doing very good on Wolverine. He's doing excellent actually. You know, he was born to draw Wolverine, but even more so Victor Bogdanovich, the second artist on Wolverine is Killing it. And yes, I did hear your, your comments when I talked about him a, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think he's a, a Capullo clone. Well, I think he, he definitely has a Capullo style, but he is a young artist. He will eventually uh, take his own style out of that, and, and he'll have the, the signature Bogdanovich style that you know flows out of the kind of the great Capullo uh, family of artists. You know, obviously that is the style that he is going for. And I think it just, it fits Wolverine. It looks badass on the character. And I think it's tripping. So this is, it, it, you know, you're like, Wes, are you being consistent? Yes, I am being consistent. This is a fake milestone. I always call Marvel out for the fake milestones. Normally I'm a little bit more upset, but this is the right team. If you're going to fake it, folks, fake it with the best uh, team of Wolverine creators that you've had on the character, you know, in 10 to 15 years. So, 
I am very excited about this. Obviously, you know, with some of the details, we know that Maverick is going to be in here. He was uh, during the Jim Lee uh, era. You know, he was in there with, I think it was Wolverine and Sabretooth and Maverick were hunting Omega Red back in the day. So I think it's cool that we're going to get to see that character. But also, uh, it also it says we're going to, this is going to introduce new enemies. I like that. I always like new enemies. Redefine old allies and give Wolverine uh, plenty of opportunity to do what he does best. And I imagine that's slice, dice, and kick some ass, folks. So I'm actually really excited about this. I'm willing to throw down $9 on a badass Wolverine comic illustrated by Kubert and Bogdanovich, written by Ben Percy. I got issue number one, and I was thoroughly satisfied. It, it was a great issue. We got two stories in there, and I thought it was very good. So I don't know who these old allies that they're talking about are. You know, are they talking about just the... You know, the X-Men, his X-Men allies, is it going to be, you know, Cy Cyclops? Obviously, there's been a lot of weird stuff going on. And Don of X with Wolverine, Cyclops, and Jean Grey, is it going to do with that? Is it going to be some old characters? Who do you think it's going to be? Who would you like to see that's an old ally of Logan, Wolverine? Put that in the comment section. I would like to hear that. And I guarantee you, Doc is going to be perusing the comments on this video because he can't get enough X-Men. And he's going to want to talk about that as well. So... I am I a hypocrite? I don't think so. I, this is a fake milestone. I acknowledge it, but I kind of dig it because because this creative team is awesome. If you're gonna have a, a special plus size edition and celebrate the character, why not fudge the numbers and do it with the best creative team you've had in over ten to fifteen years? And that's about, that'll be the last thing I say about on that one. So I'm actually very excited. Uh, about Wolverine 350, and I will definitely be signing up for that one. And you will see that bad boy reviewed right here on Thinking Critical YouTube, likely on its own, not even part of uh, This Week in x -Men. We'll probably just give that one the solo treatment because it's going to be a plus-size issue, and you know the art's going to be great. So the second thing we got to talk about, obviously uh, Chris Claremont has had a huge impact on Wolverine. He, he took what was uh, created in, uh, I believe it's... Um, Incredible Hulk 181 took that character that that uh, you know that blank canvas and created one of the greatest comic book heroes of all time, and he is getting a 50th anniversary special from Marvel coming in December, and I think this is pretty cool too. This doesn't have all the characters I personally would have liked to to have seen him on, but we are getting some some characters that he's known known to have worked with. I believe the lead character is going to be. Danny Moonstar, it looks like we've got, uh, who we got? We got young teenage Storm in there from one of his, his uh, story arcs. We've got Gambit, Penance. We've got Hella there, as, as well as um, the Invisible Girl from Fantastic Four. So I think this is, a, it sounds pretty cool. I'm glad Chris, uh, Chris Claremont's getting to write a 50th anniversary celebration comic Hopefully it'll be 180 pages because that's what I couldn't get enough of. And they've got some pretty good artists on here. The, the two, obviously, that stand out are Brett Booth. Let, riddle me this, folks. Riddle me this, C.B. Cebulski. Riddle me this, Jordan White and the Legion of Doofuses. Why isn't Brett Booth illustrating an X-Men comic right now? Do they have a, a, a surplus of great artists on X-Men right now? Who fits X-Men better, better than Brett Booth? The man was born to be the the franchise uh, illustrate as far as X-Men. He should be on the league title. I, I've enjoyed what Lion France, Lionel Francis U has done. I've certainly enjoyed what R.B. Silva and Pepe the Raz has done. But those guys aren't Brett Booth. Uh, I'm just being honest. As, as great as I think they are, they are not Brett Booth. I'm glad that he's, he's illustrating this Chris Claremont comic, this anniversary comic, because he's so good. But he should be one of the mainstay artists uh, in Dawn of X right now. I, I, it's just, it's a shame he isn't. And then the other one, the other artist of note, obviously uh, Chris Claremont's New Mutants collaborator, Bill Sienkiewicz. One of the most unique comic book art styles in the industry. You see a lot of people try to uh, imitate them. Often imitated, never duplicated. Right now, uh, I believe we've got Rod Reese. He's got a Bill Sienkiewicz vibe to him, but it, it's just not the same. Obviously, we did see Chris Claremont and Bilson Kevich team up, I believe, at the end of 2019 with a New Mutants uh, special one-shot. It was pretty cool. The art, art was dope. I'm not a big fan of Bill personally, but...
but as an artist, he certainly stands out among the crowd. He, he's, um, you know, he, he's, he's a classic artist. He's, he's got his own style. It certainly fits New Mutants and uh, the, some of the characters that are working on here. So I'm glad that they're getting back together. You know, they're giving Chris Claremont great artists. And that's what he deserves for his 50th anniversary special. I'm a little disappointed we don't see Carol Danvers as Miss Marvel in this comic book. Uh, you know, Chris Claremont really went out of his way and saved that character after the weird uh, Avengers 200 debacle where they really just destroyed Carol Danvers' Miss Marvel character that was actually pretty well loved up to that point. Really weird stuff done to that character. If you've never read Avengers 200, I can't describe it. It must be seen for yourself, folks. You won't believe your eyes as you're reading it. And when you're done reading it, you won't believe that Chris Claremont was able to take that enormous pile of incestuous dung that was sitting on the paper right there and was able to actually spin it, uh, do a couple of retcons and fix the character and send her into a, you know, a, a new era of, of popularity and great stories for, for, um, Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel, until they ruin the character again. So I think it's a little disappointing that she's not being included on there. He really did something special when he saved that character. And he, you know, that's comic book writing, you know, master level stuff on how to go and clean somebody else's mistake up. And um, he did a great job with that. Chris, Chris Claremont's the man. He's probably the, the greatest modern comic book writer there is. You know, he had the greatest run in comic book history with Uncanny X unquestionable there's never been an, an, a sustained a sustained run of excellence uh, like chris claremont's uncanny x-men it's like was that 15 years 15 years how many duds are in there like five or six it, it's it's amazing and you have so many classic characters and even the stuff that you see uh, jonathan hickman playing with right now in dawn of x and in house of x powers and ted before this a lot of that stuff is chris claremont the man is a genius he deserves this, and I'm very excited for it. I am down for the cause, and I will be dropping the $15 or whatever it is at C.B. Sobolski, and the Legion of Doofuses are going to fleece me for to enjoy this comic because I think it's going to be well worth it. I love Brett Booth, Bill Sienkiewicz, obviously a classic artist associated with Chris, Chris Claremont. This is going to be well worth it, folks. All right, now getting to the last story, and shockingly, Chris Claremont is associated with this one as well, and this is going to be... This is a tribute to 50 years of Conan, and it's going to be king size Conan, uh, you know, 50th anniversary spell celebration. Roy Thomas is kind of the big name on this. Obviously, he's probably penned the greatest Conan stories and arcs of all time. He obviously penned Conan the Barbarian number one back in 1970 and wrote 115 consecutive issues out of the 650 uh, issues from, from Marvel. From 1970, uh, from 1970 to 2000. And check this out, folks. Guess who his artist is going to be? It, it's not the, you know, it's not one of his his old artists. You know, uh, I can't remember the uh, the classic artist that I would have expected to be paired with. Steve McNiven. Tell me Steve McNiven wasn't born to draw Conan the Barbarian. Is there a man with a more gritty style that better suits Conan the Barbarian than Steve McNiven? Okay, probably Ron Garney. I, I think he's probably a would be a better Conan illustrator. But Steve McNiven is a great illustrator. I cannot wait to see him and Roy Thomas. And this is and that's good. Their story is going to be a prelude to the original Conan story that Roy Thomas wrote back in 1970. Uh, should be pretty cool. The second uh, story is written and illustrated, and this is his first time ever at Marvel Comics, folks. Hard to believe. Legend in the industry, Kevin Eastman, obviously the creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, one of the huge comic book franchises turned into one of the huge uh, cartoon franchises turned into one of the huge movie franchises. And we, I think we've all played the, the uh, Nintendo games and everything. Kevin Eastman, folks, the mastermind behind Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, is going to be writing and illustrating a Conan the Barbarian story. That's going to rule. And then we get it here, folks. Chris Claremont and Roberto Della Torre. Uh, are going to be uh, writing and illustrating a Conan story about uh, you know Conan's career as a mercenary, a turning point in his career as a mercenary. That should be really fun. I I don't know if has Chris has Chris Claremont ever written a Conan story. I do not know. 
But I will definitely be uh, be excited for that one. The last two I'm l less excited for, Kurt Busiek is a jerk-off, but he's a good writer. And he's going to be um, be be writing an early brush with sorcerers, uh, with a sorcerer's fort. With a sorcerer will shape Conan's destiny. And he, that's going to be illustrated by Pete Woods. Obviously, he was just doing Iron Man 2020. He was doing yeoman's work on Iron Man 2020 with one of the worst scripts I've ever read in my life. That was a terrible column, folks. Pete Woods made it almost uh, digestible by just being a good artist. So um, that that should be should, that should be fine. Kurt Busiek's a good writer. Now this last one is weird, and it's going to be Conan and Belit sail together uh, for the first time since Marvel relaunched both their titles uh, in 2019. Steve uh, DeKnight, I believe he, he was, um, was the producer of the Netflix Daredevil series. I might have it wrong. He might have been something else. I thought I think he was the producer. Is going to write it. That'll be kind of strange. But the really strange one is the artist, Jesus Saez, who was just illustrating the Star Wars comic and has a very, uh, very clean, very modern, very digital look to his art. And I can't imagine an artist not fitting in with the character more than Jesus size on Conan. I've seen some of the preview art and my worst fears are absolutely correct. Uh, it looks awful. It does not look like a Conan comic. Um, hopefully that one's like four pages or something. Hopefully that's not, not one of the big stories. So you can't win them all folks. Three very badass creative teams, Roy Thomas, Steve McNiven, Kevin Eastman, and then Chris Claremont, Roberto De La Torre. One pretty darn good one, Kurt Busiek and Pete Woods, and then one that's completely confounding, Steve uh, DeKnight and Jesus Saez. So I will definitely be buying this one as well. I'm actually really excited. Conan's one of my favorite characters. Uh, maybe, you know, he's probably my second favorite character or least hero in, in uh, fiction right after Luke Skywalker. So, boom, I'm very excited about this. I will definitely be jumping in on this too, folks. So there you go. Three comics. I'll be buying them all. I think they're all going to be well worth your money. And uh, I'm definitely recommending them. You're going to see them probably all reviewed right here on the channel because uh, they all sound very good. Going to be well worth the money. And, uh, you know, sometimes the Legion of Doofuses get some of this stuff right. I think, uh, you know, uh, Wolverine 350 is a fake milestone. It's it's not real, folks. It's going to be Wolverine 360. But I don't care because Percy and and, um, and Victor Bogdanovich and Kubert have been absolutely destroying it on Wolverine. Chris Claremont 50th anniversary special comic book. That is a must buy folks. And if you like Conan, I can't imagine a cooler creative team to put on King size Conan uh, than what they've done. So I, I think they definitely knocked the, most of this out of the park and I, I couldn't be more excited. And that'll do it today, folks. Thank you all for joining me. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.